Hi everybody, uh, I'm glad you could join. Uh, my name is Joab Hollander and I work for Fortelix. And I also write this blog, blog.fortelix.com. So if you find yourself uh, disagreeing with much of what I'm saying in this presentation, uh, you can go to this blog and find a lot more to disagree with. Um, all right, here's my agenda. Um, I'll have a single slide about Fortelix, our company. Uh, most of the presentation will be at a very abstract level, but I wanted to just um, show you what we do and towards the end I'll connect it to the topic of this presentation. Then I'll talk about what are AI based systems, um, highlighting the fact that those are huge systems of systems. So they have uh, machine learning uh, components but they also have mechanics and software and hardware and all of that and that's a big part of the complexity. Um, then I'll talk about the challenges of verifying AI-based systems. And I won't stay long on this topic because I assume just about everybody um, in this conference will talk about that, so I'll save me some talking. Um, and then I'll overview some of the current approaches, uh, highlighting uh, both what I like about those approaches and some things which could still be improved. And finally, I'll talk, I'll suggest a top-down um, approach that sort of encompasses many of those and I promise a summary. Okay, so this is my single slide uh, about Fortelix. We are a software company. We provide a scenario-based automation and analytics tool uh, and a verification platform to verify uh, autonomous vehicles and ADAS. Uh, we are at the top part of this picture and at the bottom, there's all those simulation tools and hardware in the loop and test tracks and so on. We don't do any of those. We just connect with everybody's. Um, what we do is we have this um, language, uh, MSDL for Measurable Scenario Description Language, which we made open and which is actually hopefully becoming a standard in the sense that that will converge with uh, the ASAM Open Scenario 2.0. Uh, we create many, many instances of the abstract scenarios from this language. And then there's a uh, coverage and analytics tool to uh, collect everything and see how well you have done so far. Um, okay, so let's talk about what a, an AI-based system looks like. And I'll, my example would be an autonomous vehicle system. There's, of course, many examples. So you could talk about ADAS, which is somewhat simpler. You could talk about delivery bots. There are many examples, but an AV is a fairly complex example, so it's worth talking about. Notice that we're talking about end-to-end -end verification more than we're talking about uh, component verification. So, you know, a simplistic view of this is there's the outer world, you know, with the people and the cars and the animals and the all the craziness out there. And then there's this pipeline, which is the AV itself, starting with sensing, then perception, prediction, planning, control, and rest of car. With rest of car is everything else, the dynamics, how the tire glides on the snow, all of that stuff. And then that influences back the world. Um, so we want to do end-to-end -end verification. Some of it is made out of machine learning. So for instance, usually perception and some of prediction is made out of machine learning, maybe some of planning. Some people like coma.ai um, use machine learning from everything from sensing all the way to the rest of the car. All the middle is made out of machine learning, but most people don't. So for most people, um, the full um, AV is made out of sensing, which is mechanics and dynamics and so on. Some machine learning, some software, some hardware, some mechanics, and so on. And the bugs hide anywhere in there. Specifically also, if you are whatever, Uber AV or Voyage or whatever, your system is even bigger because it has all of those support systems, subsystems like remote supervision and maintenance and map updates and so on. And you're responsible for all of this. So any bug in any of this, is your bug and we want to test this whole bigger system. Now, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there's unavoidable risk. So even if there's no bugs, you know, risk could happen because this world is wild. But um, I'll 
mainly talk about avoidable risks. So and let's call those bugs. And bugs could be in a specific component, like your C++ code for the planning has a bug in it, or your machine learning has some bug in it, which is probably harder to debug. But bugs could also be in the system itself. So as we all know, one can create buggy systems out of perfect components because of misunderstanding. So for instance, maybe there's a bug in the AV in the sense that um, the planning system has a misunderstanding about the rest of what the rest of the car say the braking system can do in snow. And um, similarly, perhaps perfect perception is perfect all by itself, but you didn't take uh, into account the fact that during maintenance, uh, you know, some cameras may be uh, may become misaligned and now perception is not so good. So those are more system level bugs. And there are lots of those. Okay, so how do we debug this stuff? First, I wanna say that AV verification is the grand experiment in, of complex system verification of our time. And it's different than what has come before. You could argue that, you know, a, an AV is no more complex or just a little more complex than say a rocket. But nevertheless, there's a qualitative difference here that has to do with the scale of deployment. So this is really something new. So if you design a rocket, then, you know, there's accidents in rockets. The picture on the right is the Ariane 5 uh, blowing up. But nevertheless, you have maybe 10 minutes of suspense per year because there's only a few launches. And so most of the bugs will never surface until your rocket goes out of commission. Um, this is very different for AVs. If you have an AV um, fleet of 1 million cars, you have about 100 billion minutes of suspense every year. And so most bugs will eventually surface. This is new. This has sort of never happened before. It means that you know, all those bugs will come out there and you somehow need to find them in a very methodological way. So we need an industrial scale process, so to speak, to find all those, those bugs, to assess where we are in the verification process and so on. It is somewhat similar to what happened in the electronic design industry where I come from about 25 years ago, where chips got complex enough and each one of those one was manufactured millions of times and, and each of those chips were used day and night. So you were sure that if there's a bug there, it will be found. Uh, but the current world, the AV world is more complex as I'll talk about in a minute. All right, so there's various problems or various um, th challenges in verifying AI-based systems. And I want to talk especially about the one of them being opaque. It's a big issue. So uh, it may or may not console you that all complex systems are somewhat opaque because they're so big that even if you could look at the C++ code, nevertheless, they're too big to understand. But ML systems are worse. So ML systems have no um, clear internal modular structure. You can look inside, but it's just nodes and weights in there, which doesn't help you. So you cannot do module by module verification unlike a typical hardware or software system. That's a big issue. Specs are hard to define, even where the boundaries are of your perception uh, system and you know what it should uh, output is not, um, is not easy to define. Uh, checking is often probabilistic, right? So is an accident a bug? Usually, except under stress test, you're allowed to do some accidents in some cases. And it's very hard to check if a bug is really fixed. You fix it usually by, you know, adding something to the training set, but you cannot reason about this, this fix because it is opaque and on and on. So it is really tough to do verification. Here are some suggested solutions. And for each of those, I'll explain why I like it and also what could be improved. So. A lot of people, and this is sort of a very established technique, use statistical methods, maybe MCMC and so on, to assess the residual risk. And this is established also, it helps you find the residual risk even when there's no bugs, but it's very partial. It doesn't work for unknown issues. 
Uh, another uh, well-known technique is formal verification. It's excellent when it can be applied, but it struggles with complex systems and um, probabilistic checks. There are some techniques for that, but in general, if it's complex enough, you just cannot do formal verification on it. Many people uh, use requirement-based systems. This is, again, established and structured method, but I, I do want to say that um, it's better to use risk dimensions than a requirement-based system. They are more general. I'll talk about that. They're, they're similar, that there's a subtle difference between those. Um, some people try to carefully reason about what not to test so they can uh, concentrate their tests and avoid non-essential expensive tests, especially on test tracks. But um, this habit is actually not very good when you have uh, cheap virtual testing. It's actually much better to just test everything and then reason about the probabilities of a bug. It's more economical in people's time rather than computer time. Um, specifically for ML systems, some people use ML-oriented techniques. So there's like Deep Explore, if you've heard of it, that tries to do node coverage rather than code coverage in regular code. And this help avoid the typical blind spots of verification engineers. Verification engineers being human, uh, things think like humans, so they cannot think about what are the edge cases for a machine learning system. So this is very useful, but it has various limitations. And um, like one is, we all know implementation coverage is not enough. You could have like half your system not working and implementation uh, coverage would be very happy. And finally, there's people who try to use uh, machine learning techniques to verify ML. So they train ML-based modules to do the checking, the coverage definitions and so on. And this is powerful, as we all know, um, ML keeps winning in many competitions, so to speak, but it is opaque. So now we have the verification system being opaque uh, and people want to understand what it is checked. So there is a sort of a rough consensus forming which says you should use something like a safety case where you enumerate the risks in human understandable terms. So lay people, and judges and, and um, uh, the media could understand what was checked. And then you show how you mitigate. This is a consensus, but how do you show or verify all of those risk dimensions that you indeed met, mitigated them on an industrial scale while working with opaque systems? How do you do that practically? So that's what I want to suggest here. Here's my suggestion. You enumerate all the risk dimensions as a coverage plan. And those include various driving scenarios, various human behaviors, the ML limitations, arbitrary system failures, anything you can think of. And then for each of these, you write a bunch of abstract scenarios, say in MSDL, and you run those using some verification system. I'll show an example in a minute using your various verification platforms, which each has a, you know, pluses and minuses. And then you collect coverage grade and you continue until you're happy with the results. Um, so that's how you do modular verification of non-modular opaque system. This is our system as we described it. It is opaque. The ML system is particularly opaque, but the whole thing and the world itself are opaque. And what you do is, you put your verification system on it. And so while the system itself remains opaque, the, um, the verification system is modular, clear, and easy to understand. And it is what makes the whole thing uh, sort of visible. It serves as a proxy for the whole system. Uh, let me um, show you specifically how we do it. Here is an example of a movement scenario, cutting and slow. Don't pay any attention to the actual code, but just to give you a feeling of what it looks like, here is how you define coverage, what it is that you want to collect for it. You then run this abstract scenario many times with different seeds. And as you can see, there's many variations, places in the map, different sites and so on. And then um, you 
collect the coverage information from all of this, and you can finally look at the full result and see what was covered and what was not. So back to the top level, and this is my summary slide. This is how you do it, or this is a suggested way to do it. You um, can verify AI-based systems by um, having all those risk dimensions, filling them in using uh, actual running and um, doing getting the coverage and grades. And you can then go to risk dimension by risk dimension, and especially to the mix of those, and um, do as much verification as you can. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.